Anker, Anker, whatever you want to call them. They did send this box for review. There was no funds exchanged, so we just kept it unbiased like we always do. And yeah, boy, this is kind of a double failure, especially crazy for like a $2,000 box that does battery power and everything else. I mean, it's got great plugs. The second unit I've received because, yeah, the first one had issues, so we sent that one back. And, yeah, let's get to the uh, second set of issues we're having again. They need to stick to just making phone chargers. So in this battery pack, really just the typical features. I mean, you've got the light up here at the top. It's kind of a warm white. It's got different settings. And then you got the display. Turns off and on. This little blinking here is the Bluetooth. That is one thing I do wish that they had the Wi-Fi module in it. I know you're probably saying, well, wait, a cloud? You like cloud? Well, in some of the cases that I could see that, hey, if I'm camping and I have it on the hotspot, I'd like to see on my phone how much solar is charging it or not. And do I need to go back and move the solar panels? That would be kind of cool. You know, but hey, the Bluetooth just connects to locally to their app. I think the power saving, that does turn off the display. I did not see like a power button that actually turned this off though. Now there are individual buttons, of course, for the car sockets that turns that 12 volt on and off. That's your old school kind of cigarette lighter for chargers. Your AC outlet inverter, that turns that on. That activates, these are 20 amp rated. You know, they have the little notch on the side. This is that 30 amp. This is not split phase. This is that 30 amp 120. So like for some of the RVs and whatnot that we used. Um, the reset over here, not a whole lot really to it. Very simple. Of course, you got your USBs over here, USB-A and three USB-Cs on the side. Got your handle kind of like a handle you'd see like on some luggage it collapses got vents on the side on the back party on the back you got your xt60 looks like the reset circuit breaker and then you've got your three prong ac in did have this outside so it's a little dirty this is, uh, I think, for an external battery pack. I don't have one for that, so I didn't get to use that part of it. But pretty much, that's about it. Now, they do have, if you want to put this down, so that way, when you are have it like this, and that way you can just keep the thing up kind of like a suitcase, and it works fine like that. So nothing crazy, just your simple run-of-the-mill battery pack, but um, I was glad to see that they fixed the sockets on here because I found one review that showed on, I think it was Amazon, that these were also backwards just like mine. They had the neutral and the hot reversed. Then it even got worse whenever you were charging it and turned it off, it would do I think a reverse hot and ground, I think, which was bad. So they sh did another unit, shipped it to me, but we still had some issues with the inverter. I'm hoping that they did fix all the other ones and make those people hold as well. Because, yeah, having reversed neutral and hot is not a good thing to have. This one was wired correctly, but of course these four were not wired correctly. So I'm trying it with the Mango Power, I think it's like a 200 watt panel, and just want to see how it would do with the charging. I've been running it for several hours, do have the box in the shade so I don't get it totally like hot and overheating. But yeah, you can see it's charging, showing 111, I think I saw like 130, probably about typical for this panel. I think if I did position a little bit better, I can get about 140, 150 out of it so no issues with charging off of solar and it does just plug in the back using that same little port that xt60 so something definitely weird with the pull pump 
This typically pulls, I think, around 900 watts in the current setup right now, which is definitely within the realm of this, but listen to what it does. I'll even turn the inverter outlet on and then just plug it in. And it just like shakes and doesn't really spin up, which is weird. Not sure why it's doing that. So I even took this Upes or whatever it is. You see it pulling right at almost 900 watts. And this is a 1200 watt output. And it runs the pump fine. Doesn't make that crazy noise that the Anker one did. And this is a smaller box. And I'm not sure why you would think the Anker would be able to run that pump without any issue given the wattage output it has. Right there is good. All right, you gonna plug in the wire, buddy? Yes, sir. Let's try it with this first. I wanna make sure both work and come up. So go ahead and plug it with the little adapter. It's just our 20 amp adapter. All right, what we got going on? We got 34 watts. Let's get the AC kicking in here and see what happens. So I got a little DIY teardrop camper we've been working with. We're showing 127 volts. I just have this like a 12 volt power supply. We're showing our 12 volt power. We're good to go. Let's see inside. We have our lights on. Let's turn the lights on, buddy. Full blast. And the, let's turn the AC on. You probably can't see it on the camera too well, but it's flickering my lights like crazy. Once the compressor kicked on, that's not normal. I'm gonna try it with a different battery pack to make sure that it's not this, but yeah, I don't wanna burn up my AC if this isn't putting out proper voltage. So on the graph, it's showing some little jaggies in there. I want to plug it up to actually house power and just see the difference, just for curiosity's sake and reference. What wattage are we pulling? So we're pulling like right at a thousand watts with the air conditioner running. I'm gonna try a different battery pack because I've had that weird issue as well with that pool pump, kind of weird. So check this out. This is on another battery pack I haven't reviewed yet. Look how clean the lines look on the oscilloscope. So same voltage, but the weird thing is, this is the echo flow. It's, I think it's up to a thousand watts it does, but we're at 570. And I think to remember that there was like 600 watts was the typical of this air conditioner. So, the weird thousand was like I don't know was the compressor not starting up and it was just cycling on and off because of the compressor sounds normal it just kicked in and stayed kicked in and it feels a lot colder and the big thing is no flickering lights and it's kicked in running pretty good we're still running 60 Hertz volts 120 so something strange about the inverter on that anchor one, I'm not really sure what to say or what to do. I'm looking at the hit, this, this is 81. We'll see if it runs and it should get fairly cool. And there, I don't wanna keep running this air conditioner on that anchor one, It's that scares me. The compressor didn't sound as clean as this is right now. But, all in all, um, I'm going to say a no on this unit because of the pull pump issue I had and also I had the air conditioner unit wouldn't run correctly. But I do appreciate them for seeing this for review and to check out, but just not something I'm going to recommend at this time, maybe when they can fix the inverter. I did see it was jumping 
up on the cycles like it was showing on the oscilloscope 67 hertz at times and maybe jumping faster than the oscilloscope could see not really sure but um i didn't have the issue with the other battery packs